Yo, 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 what up? It's your boy Kev. It's your boy Joe. And we are back in the lab. We're back. Yes, sir. Season two, we're going to say. It's been a long hiatus, you know, mm -hmm. just getting our grind on, but we're back. How you yeah. feel, Joe? You good? I feel great, man. So mm -hmm. I'm in a great, like, aura right now. It's a great time. Yeah. Back in here. Agreed. Yeah. Today we got a special guest, man. The homie from the Los Angeles Clippers. We got Terrence Mann in the building. Hey. Hey. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's a cool dude, down to earth guy. I had to bring him in. It was a given. You know appreciate that, so yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you appreciate for you, man. freeing up your time. I know you got a lot of other places you could be, want to be, but you in the lab. So My bed, you, that's it, man. Just, just sleeping. <laughs> and eating pizza and drinking Sprite? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Look at him over there. I seen that today, and I was like, that is not good for the... Who, wait, that was yours or that was his? It's the champ. Okay. Oh, I thought that was your food. That's Ooh. why I was like, yo, you're wildin'. I don't eat pizza. I don't drink Sprite. Oh. Okay. What's, your, what's your diet like? Um, I try to just eat. I'm, I'm well educated on what I need to put in my body. So, you know, I just try to eat the right things. Um, it's not real strict or specific, but um, I kind of calmed down. It was strict and specific for a long time, and I wasn't gaining as much muscle as I wanted to. So I had to kind of switch things up and eat more and different things. Have you always been conscious of your diet? Nah, not always. So when I was in college, I was a senior and I had my first surgery ever. And I gained, I went from like 205, 210 to 230. And I was like, Jesus. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? So I had to f learn everything myself and figure it all out, what to eat, what not to eat. And then from there, I just learned. Damn, 230. So you went from dunking to like. Yeah, I was, I was moving slow. <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah, it was a bad summer for me. I was eating Chipotle every day. We do that sometimes. No, nah, yeah. I mean, I still, <laughs> I still, <laughs> yeah, I still get into the Chipotle. No, nah, that's cool, man. So, let's just quick background. You know, where you from? Home life, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Hey. Um, lived there till I was ten. Then moved to Lowell, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where you know I kind of rep. I, I mean, I rep both of them crazy, but. Lowe's where I really learned um, a lot. You know, I learned a game of basketball. I played baseball there. I was real, played a whole bunch of different sports, met a whole bunch of different people. Um, it's a real diverse city. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a melting pot of all different cultures. So just growing up there was real cool. And yeah, lived in Massachusetts for forever. And then um, ended up going to college at Florida State. I wanted to get out of the cold, kind of go south to the sun. Uh, I committed, no visit, no nothing. I just, oh, wow. yeah, I just believed in the coaches committed. And I was like, I just want to be in the sun. I'm tired of the cold weather. <laughs> I haven't baseball. been back since. What position do you play? Um, I pitched and I played center field. Did you play baseball? Uh, I don't know if I could classify as play, but I tried. You was, tried. Out, you was out there? <laughs> yeah, I tried. I, I just couldn't swing the bat at all, bro. Like, yeah. I was terrible at, at hitting. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of the coaching staff at Florida State, what was in, in the weather? I guess you should say out of the two obvious right there, what really drew you to the school? Um, I think that they they were in the ACC, so mm -hmm. it was my highest conference that was recruiting me, and they were the only. They actually it was them in Boston College at the time. Boston College was last in the league, yeah. so I didn't really want to go. Just you know, I wanted to be a pro, and I knew going to Boston College wasn't probably the right path for that for me. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so as soon as you know, they they offered me, and I was like, I, I don't really want to go anywhere else. I seen the coach; they they were the only coach staff that was telling me that I could be a pro. You know, every other coach staff was, oh, I come. You know, no, that was never on the, a conversation. The, yeah, but they were just like, you're a pro, and we see it. So I was like, I'm going there. Got you. And with baseball, was that was that what that the other was that the only other sport you did? Baseball and soccer. Were the, was you were you ever at some point like, I want to go to the league? Or was it yeah. kind of always basketball? No. So I was it, – it was like – it was phases for me. So early on it was straight soccer. Like that, that was what I was real good at. Mm -hmm. I was way better at soccer than I was at anything else. Um, that's all I watched. Like I was a real soccer fiend. And then I moved to Massachusetts and my friends in the neighborhood were playing baseball and basketball. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole different dynamic. So then I started paying attention to baseball, playing, you know, the MLB video game all the time, watching baseball, paying attention to it. Um, watching college basketball, NBA basketball, stuff like that. And that's when I really started to transition over from soccer. Um, and yeah, then I just got too tall for soccer. That's what I was about to Everybody say. Everybody was little and moving <laughs> way too fast. So I was like, yeah. 
That's dope. Was it easy to pick up basketball coming from soccer, or was it like? Um, well, I always played both, so it was it was, it was easy. Um, my dad helped me a lot with the basketball, you know, transitioning from soccer and basketball because he played soccer, but he would always tell me like they're very similar the footwork, footwork yeah. the spacing, making reads. Like it, right. it's all it was all real similar to me, and he he always pointed it out for me. Your your father played basketball. No, he played soccer. Oh, okay, he, and he never he did not touch a basketball. Guy. <laughs> you should see him. Your move. mom? Mom played basketball. She played at Georgetown. Oh wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so she was a she was a stud in basketball, and then she coached for twenty five years after that college. She coached college basketball, and then last year she did WNBA. Oh wow, that's amazing! I did not know that. Yeah. You got siblings? Yeah, I have a little brother. He plays Division three in Pittsburgh right now. In Pittsburgh, got mm-hmm. you. So that kind of goes into one of the questions that I was going to ask you, and it was going to be that, so now I know it would have been soccer or baseball, but if you weren't playing basketball, and we're going to cancel out soccer and baseball, mm-hmm. what, what, could you, what would you think you'd be doing? Whew, that's a great question, man. I never really thought about that. Like, I never really took the time to sit down and think of what I could be doing, but um, I'm real passionate on – helping other people so some something of that nature whether that's being a teacher or just something that's helping the youth and helping other people impactful yeah totally that's that's something in that lane that's close to a question i had as well because i'm a coach slash trainer right now and uh it's not realistic that every kid's gonna make the nba so i I was gonna ask did you have like a b plan like a plan b like if it doesn't work out nah it was all gas no yeah i like Um, that only because though, so I didn't have a B plan. Only because at every level I went to, my dream got closer and closer, and I could feel it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So mm. there was no reason for me to be like, "What's my plan B?" In a sense, I was Preach. just like, "I'm gonna just keep going until I have to, That's until I have to reroute." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So every level I got to, I felt like I was getting closer to it. So I was like, "I don't." Wanna, everybody was like, "Oh, you always get, you have to have a plan B. You have to have a plan B." I was like. I'll, I'll get there you when don't, I get there. Yeah. But you for now, I'm don't focused have a plan on this. B. Yeah, you Especially don't have six, to five. have one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you then, don't have to have a plan B. You could just keep going, and then you don't get there, you reroute. Yeah. You adjust. Well, and like keep, so keep like that. that. So, so keep that. So did you ever have moments, though, where you didn't think this was going to happen? And, and what did you tell yourself, like, to push through those mm. moments? Um, yeah. There, what did you do? There were, there were definitely um, a lot of moments. Um, whether that's, you know, getting no playing time on a team growing up where you think you should be playing uh, <laughs> or that's making the B team and this oh, – I can't swear in this, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, good, it's PG-13. <laughs> it's not TV this Max, guy man. over here made the A team that year. I made the B team. Um, but, yeah, just a whole bunch of different stuff. What grade, just, what grade is this? What was that, eighth grade? Seventh grade, seventh grade. But we like that. We were taking basketball serious. Yeah, he's like, right, right, right. That's back then. I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that, especially leading up into high school, like, you yeah. know, it's, it's kind of gearing you to feel like, all right, who's about to play JV? Yeah, that's the you know precursor. That's, that's like, the precursor. That's really when it starts. But that's what you think yeah. it is, but it yeah. ultimately changes. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You can grow like I, like I did. I grew a whole bunch. So I got I to gotta, I gotta ask you this. Did mm-hmm. you, when you made your B team, were you like, nah, I got to go somewhere else where I could play? Maybe it'd be less of basketball yeah. and I could make the A team. I could get. All like leave points, your situation. So nah, my, my my parents wouldn't let me do that. So I played that whole season and I was leading scorer. Like I forced it on that on that whole season just to like, you know, prove to myself and to the to the A team like I'm really supposed to be up there. So you didn't take so, the easy way. So no. in some way being on that B team got you better. Yeah. Made sure. you hungry. Especially mentally, like it just I don't know that year I remember specific even though it was a long time ago I remember like it kind of changed me in a way to just be like it was my first setback almost mm-hmm. you know I was used to making it fifth sixth grade I made the A team mm-hmm. I was used to, I was I think I was starting my mm-hmm. fifth grade on the A team maybe sixth grade too I don't remember but I went imagine that I went from starting on the A team to not making the team at all mm. so and it obviously wasn't because of my game I don't think it was politics you know coaches. You know the the dad. Does play you know what I'm saying? The dad's the coach. It's different searches. His, they wanted his friends on the team. A, mm-hmm. It was all that type of stuff. But as a kid, you don't know that. You're just thinking like, dang, they just put me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not good enough. So mm-hmm. it was good to help me. You know, grow as a person and a player. And you pushed through though, but you didn't take the easy way out. You right. didn't let I you stay. Didn't try to play on any other teams. 
I also mm. played AU, which was crazy though, was I was playing AU with the dudes on the A team, starting with them on AU team, killing, like we're up there killing AU, but then, you know, in the winter I was playing on the B team they was on, so it was crazy. That had to crazy, be crazy dynamic. Mentally. mentally. I just want kids to understand that that's a big point that, okay, even though you had a setback, you didn't make the team, you didn't complain, you didn't say, oh, I'm leaving, you didn't cry to your mom and say, I want to get out of here. Right. You stuck it through and that actually pushed you to get better. So I know a lot of kids don't like me right now because they might not have made the A-team <laughs> or they might not play that much, but from but seventh grade, didn't play that much, now he's in the league. Right. So Prime example of just put in the work, stick with it, have a, have a hustler grind mentality. Yeah, man. I mean, even in eighth grade, I made the A team, but I didn't start or and I barely played towards the end mm. of the year. Like in the championship game, I probably played. We won the championship that year for the first time in four years or five years. Mm -hmm. In that game, I probably played like ten minutes. Like, so totally. that's why I just told the kids at practice. We just had practice, and I told the kids, I was like, "Look, guys, some of you guys, you know, no matter what level that you, because I know you all look at each other and size each other up, and no matter what level you're at, that doesn't mean quit or just accept where you're at." I was like, "Because there's guys that." peak early right. and then mm. they're gonna get and they're gonna stay there right. and there's gonna be those guys that weren't maybe as noticed or whatever that if you keep grinding you could surpass those people make it to them i literally just said this on wednesday when we were coaching the kids so nice. do, you, do you remember who was uh when you was in eighth grade or seventh grade who was number one in the country or? yeah um it was a i can say their names on here yeah. yeah um i think it was if i'm not mistaken um the dude from texas the, the mickey mitchell Mickey Mitchell that year, um, and then there was like a dreadhead dude from Atlanta, and then there was Alonzo Trier. Shout out to Alonzo, he's still nice. Okay. He's still, he's still, he's probably one of the best. Like from when we were younger to now, still like right. real nice. Um, and then there was a dreadhead dude from Georgia. I forgot his name. Keyshawn Johnson. There, there was like you know there was a did, bunch of dudes. So was, there was a couple up there that didn't make the league though. Yeah, I don't think any of them did except Zoe. So right now. I coach, I got an eighth grade team. They're nationally ranked. We got the number two player in the country. We had the number three player as well. And I try to tell the kids that don't play as much, like those guys, like now it doesn't mean they're gonna make it because they're ranked number one in eighth grade. Right. right. It's four years of hard work in high school. Then you go to college a year or two. You, things can change. So y'all yeah, heard, 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 heard it here. I had to do, I had somebody tell me that I think his son was playing fourth grade or he's in third grade going into fourth fifth grade or some shit like that and he was saying that his son is top five in the country and i'm like and it's nothing <laughs> and it means nothing if i don't want to be disrespectful but like that's cool and all but like mm -hmm. that's too young to be ranking kids mm -hmm. this is going to get to their head by the time they're in ninth grade it's over they they got nothing to play for because they don't think they, they were the right. top. I feel like the they should school. stop that. Bro, bro they, yeah. have, they should look. discontinue rankings until at least. Freshman. Yeah. I think freshman, freshman is, sophomore, is like, cool. Yeah. In high school, yeah, do that for yeah. the colleges. And, mm -hmm. you know, but below that, but get below better. Below that, it's just get crazy better. to do bro, rankings. I've seen a seventh grade mock NBA draft. Come on now. For 2030-something. No some chance. Of them, <laughs> any of them like, in yeah. the top Some of them ten kids ought to go be like, doctors bro. and some other stuff. Like, yeah, it's not bro. even going to be. People grow grow from the game. They grow apart. Like, they don't even want to play basketball anymore at a certain point, too. Facts. That's crazy. So, I got another one for you, man. Thus far in your career, what has been the most memorable moment about being in the NBA? Uh, the most memorable moment for me, I have a few, but I'd probably say. Top two. Top two, no, in no order. The first one is definitely like the first day walking into training camp and realizing where I was at and the type of roster we had structure was just like, it was crazy at the time. Like it was like Lou Will, Patrick Beverly, um, Montrez Harrell, Kawhi, Leonard, Paul George, mm. um, who else was on that team? Zubac. Mo Harkless, Zubac, but it was guys that like I've been watching my whole life. Mm. And it was all in one gym and like I'm in the locker room. We're all getting ready for training camp when I first day I'm looking around like I'm really here like this, just surreal. Casual. Mm. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's like smiling like I am, like happy right. to be in here. It was just a crazy feeling. Um so that was definitely one. 
Second one is probably, I'll go with the game six that I had um, versus the Utah Jazz. I scored 39. Mm. And that was just a moment for me, just like, yeah, you're here and you belong type of moment. That was also, also I was about to ask about like a confidence booster, like a verification for you? Yeah, it was it was more of a verification for me just because early in that year I was getting no playing time and then at the end of the year I'm doing this in the playoffs and I'm starting. So it was just a full circle moment. But me. the biggest lesson though is you didn't quit. Right. You didn't let that stuff before dictate and overshadow and yeah i mean soon yeah with this basketball stuff and in any lane i feel like from now on in my life i've been through so much with basketball with not playing playing like i said making the b team whatever anything that happens from now on is not going to phase me whether mm -hmm. it's good or bad because i've been i've been at the top i've been in the middle been at the bottom in the whole basketball process so you know i just keep going just keep going that's left foot after right and just, you know what I'm saying? Because it's going to come back to you eventually. Mm -hmm. it rather, it, in whatever lane it is, it's going to come back. You just keep going. You're going to, you know, 1% better each day. At the end of the year, you're just way yeah. better. That's dope. You got that, that's, that's hella dope. Uh, I was going to transition into uh, a lot of kids now uh, that even that I coach or that I know are, are trying to get these NIL deals. Mm. So it's, just kind of get what you thought about that. Um, and I was just a dangerous lane, man. You think it's a distraction? Yeah, it is 100%. Just because you, you're not going to play basketball for the passion of playing basketball now. Like, like before, it was like, I'm going to commit to Clemson because I want to turn that school up. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I want to be the one to take them to the lead eight for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to be the one to take them to the final four for the first time. I want to be the one to go to that school and win the national championship. It's mm -hmm. not It's not that anymore. There's no pride in it. There's no like, I'm playing for my school. You're mm -hmm. playing for it. Now you're playing for your own brand. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're making it. That's the only thing that matters once you leave high school is start, your, even in high school. Like you're, there's, <laughs> I was at the AU tournament the other week and I asked, this kid's parent, I was like, oh, did they win? He was like, nah, 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 they didn't win, but he killed, though. Like, yeah, that's like, definitely the new. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean concern. they didn't win, but he killed? <laughs> like, I don't, give, I don't care. Yeah. He killed, okay? <laughs> what yeah. is that? You did not win. Like, I, th that whole, so that's what's, that's out, the that's what's out of the game now. Yeah, it's that's like, definitely out of the game. Winning doesn't matter. I'm not, people aren't, kids aren't committing to colleges to win. They're like, I'm going there to get this 80K bag. Or get this, this bag. Um, this, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for myself and my brand, which they're not wrong because that's mm -hmm. what it is now. That's yeah. just how they made it. I hope it doesn't ruin the game, though. Yeah, I mean, we'll see I, how it goes. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a little older, so <laughs> back when we was growing up, it used to be point guards that controlled the game, mm -hmm. got assist, made pass. You'd be like, ooh, good pass. Now it's like two on one. Ah, I need this. Yeah, this <laughs> like, is me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't care if we lose for real. I don't care if I make the right play. I gotta, I gotta get mine. Right. It's, it's a lot of it. I've been noticing it. So. Ugh. Yeah, that's why somebody the other day asked me, they're like, when you're done, are you gonna coach? And I'm like, to be honest, I'm trying to set my life up so I don't have to do anything, because the way it's going right now, I don't know what it's gonna be like when it's time for me to coach. Like. Mm. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do that. I, I won't be able to sit there and coach kids that two on one break. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm. selfish basketball and not willing playing to win. Because I'm a player to play to win. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much points I have. If we win, I'm good. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's just how. Because I I watch over time like winners stay no matter what. Nice. You can't like I got it tatted on me. Respect is the ultimate currency. So. Mm. You got respect through winning, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, p people have respect through scoring points, but it's, at the end of the day, like, are you? There's are no you longevity winning? in that respect. Yeah. yeah, like you just, what are you doing? Are you winning? I, that's me, though. That's just how I take it. Yeah, I need you to talk to some of my kids, bro. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. No, what day, yeah. man? Something. The crazy. egos in these kids the nowadays coming crazy. up is crazy, and and I'm sure the old heads before us said the same thing but i think they can look the old heads now can look at both generations and right. be like nah this new wave is different mm -hmm. because of i mean getting the bag 
social media platforms, gassing everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a different animal. They go to the, the AAU tournaments, I believe, just to get a highlight. Mm-hmm. To oh, get yeah, to get to get posted. Yeah. On I just them. told him the other day. I was like, I'm about to get off Twitter. Like I was seeing uh, crazy stuff on Twitter in terms of like people posting highlights of certain things or like just crazy garbage, making the basketball sport kind of just diluted in a way. Just like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like they're they're not posting like before. Before the only things that would get posted, I feel like were like winning type of things. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like this person just won this award and this person just, now it's just like individual, like, oh, I just had 30 in this, I just had 40 in this program, like, you know what I mean? I'm gonna post my highlight, like. Yeah, and, and everybody looks good in the highlight. Yeah, Like, you're not able to decipher talent, you know? Like, I, at least I think, and I'm not as involved in the game as YouTube, but from the outside in, I can't tell who's good and who's not because it all looks the same. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I mean by dilute. Like, it's really making mm-hmm. it feel like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's and it, what a lot of kids don't understand is, in a game there might what like Kyrie Irving. You look at his highlights, it look crazy, but they probably have one or two a game. Highlights. Forty minutes of a highlight yeah, where he yeah, really yeah. goes crazy yeah. with the handles or the jelly package or a dunk or any. I'm just talking about with anybody. That's a player to a game, mm-hmm. right? And then there's a lot of real basketball that you have to worry about. Can you defend? Can you? know what you're supposed to be in, what defense you're if you're in gaps, if you're icing, if you – there's a lot to basketball that you have to worry about other than a highlight if you want to play on a high level. And yeah, so, I agree. And I feel like so nowadays they got the little, like, 20-second clips for mm-hmm. the Instagrams where it's, like, strictly just highlight of you scoring, dunking on somebody, mm-hmm. and kids are kind of comparing themselves to that. Whereas when we was growing up, we had, like, a four-minute highlight of John Wall chasing people down, b- pinning on the right. glass. John Wall, you know who playing eight. defense in his highlights. One. He's got the best on. one. Yeah. Like he's playing defense in his highlights. He, you know, what I'm saying he's make. You see him making passes, making reads. Now it's just twenty-second clip of somebody dunking it, step back threes, and mm-hmm. then that's the clip. Fact. And, and no kids are like, damn, I gotta be like that now. You know what I mean? Yep. Instead of before when we was watching highlights, it was like four minutes long of like everything. Or all around game, you saw everything passing, dribbling, shooting, yeah. dunking, athleticism, defense. It's just different. Who's got the best hoops mixtape? Like, like yeah, era. Uh, definitely either John Wall or Akil Carr. Oh, Akil Ooh, Carr. Akil Carr. Akil Carr. That was my favorite player <clears throat> when I was. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Um, Austin Rivers had a top yeah. Austin Ooh, Rivers. They, they're I'm like top off. three. Like them yeah. three, any order. You throw that on, I'm everybody's go going crazy. I'm going to go off right I'm now. I'm going to go off right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. He had it. He had it. There was a lot, though, man. Even after them, like, they, yeah. there was a whole bunch of people who had it. Andrew Wiggins had a crazy one. Yeah. yeah. He had yeah, the spin like move the dunk, yeah. head at the rim. Andrew Wiggins was looking crazy. Uh, right. What's the dude? The, he had bounce Shaquille Johnson. Shaquille. Yeah. Shaquille. Yeah. Was that his name? He went to LSU. Oh, you know who had a tough one, too? Went to North Carolina. Uh, Seventh Woods. Seventh Woods, bruh. I thought Seven, I yeah. thought Seven Woods was about to. You know, Him and Dennis, uh, Dennis Smith. Yeah, but Seven Woods was like thirteen, wilding. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he looked like he was. I mean, but again, I guess you know, shit changes, stuff yeah. changes. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm got it. Something. So, I mean, since we're on the subject of the kids, like for the kids that do want to be in your position one day, mm-hmm. what do you tell them? What is the blueprint? So I feel like. Um, you know, it's hard to give somebody a blueprint because everyone's path is different. And I, I think I, I, I stress that a lot. Like, you can't look at, because when I, I was doing, when I was younger, like looking at the next dude, like I, either I want my path to be like his or why is in my path like his and kind of, mm. you know, getting, you know, a little like, dang, like I want to, you know what I'm saying? Why didn't I get to do, get that opportunity? But everybody's path is different. So I feel like if you just, like I was talking about before, man, you just keep moving on every day. You're in that gym every day. You know what I'm saying? You love the game. We we played outside almost every day in the summer. Like we would walk from park to park in our city, just playing outside till till sundown, lights out, you know, mosquitoes out. We're still out there hooping. Like mm. we just played every day because we love the sport. And that's what I feel like you need to do. Just like keep grinding till you, till you like I said, till you have to, you know, go somewhere else. 
Yeah, kids ain't playing outside no more. No, nah, that's the crazy. Cones bro. in the gym that's not moving. Yeah. Like you gotta play. You gotta play yeah. too. Nah, not playing outside is crazy. I mean, that's a that's a crazy one. Playing, you don't. You say you don't play outside. No, I'm saying people not playing oh, outside yeah, yeah, now. Oh yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Cause when you said lights on to the lights come on this this and that that's what i used to do growing up riding bikes Dude. different neighborhoods have the basketball wedge between the the bike yep, right in the middle yeah and you just go you might get in a fight with your friends next day they're like yo you coming outside right. yeah, yeah your ball outside. got like a little warp on it probably got hit by a car but that's all you had or kicked some something. yeah someone kicked it <laughs> yeah I, yeah it's just not the same i i don't know and it's not to diss the young generation because there's exceptional talent i think the mental aspect is just different I, and I think the the attributes are way better. Like the skill, the ball handling, the hops, the jumping ability is way Everybody's better. Everybody's athletic. But the feel now. for the game, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, for you sure. Agree? Yeah. So I check this. This is this is kind of off basketball, but it it's still kind of in the same lane. Would you rather be able to go back in time ten years and start from there again, or would you like to advance 10 years to see where you are? Ooh. I would like to advance. Mm. I didn't think you was gonna say that. If I, if I go back though, is it the same exact path? Or You get to keep the knowledge that you oh, have to I'm right now. Back. Okay, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I keep the not, knowledge. Yeah, yeah you I'm have the knowledge, back. but yeah, exactly. But yeah, if I have the knowledge, in Bitcoin. what's that, 2012? I'm going back. Just 10 years, yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I'm going back 100%. Joe, what'd you do? I'm going back. I'm investing in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, what else I'm going back and I'm turning my life into, I'm going to be a billionaire. Would you still do basketball? Nah. I'd be a billionaire just. Just off of investments. Because yeah. yeah. you just flip. <laughs> you just I play flip for fun. I have my own yeah. leagues and yeah. shit. At the house or whatever, or at, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm thinking I mean, about owning the NBA. How about that? Yeah, like I'm, I'm, moving, <laughs> I'm moving different. Let me make myself the logo. <laughs> now, I would go back to, I say that. I mean, some people, I've asked somebody, and they said they'd like to see where they are. They'd like to say, you know, I'd like to see what what, what I became. No, nah, but if I you like go own. back, you're going to control what you become. Mm. But what if you got in the way of what, like, think about it. So you stop right now. So I, you don't know what's happening between now and the next 10 years. What That's if something true. in the next 10 years triggered something that really put you up? But you just went back 10 years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you may have missed that whole blessing or whatever it was. That's what if I got. go back, I'm make, you know what I'm saying? I'm going back to make sure that. It's just going to be secure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I'm going to do the same thing. With I, the same knowledge, it's, it's, it's a cheat code. It's, it's, it's a super cheat code. It's a super cheat code. But hey, you never know. Um, how important is meditation, praying, self-care when you're like 82 game season, you're traveling, life's mm -hmm. coming at you through social media, real life. I mean, listen, you young, you in the league, there's girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I, for me, it's my, so I, I mean, I'm religious, so I wake up, I pray every morning to get my morning started, my, get my day started. That's the first thing I do out of bed. And then... From there, I just feel the energy. Like, I feel good because that's how I start my day. You know what I'm saying? And then it, for me, it's also the team around me. Mm -hmm. You know, the people I have around me, making sure they're, you know, always positive or always doing things to get better for themselves and our team. You know what I'm saying? They're thinking big picture all the time. Um, so it just it helps you, you know, navigate through the little bumps in the season because in the grand scheme of things, you know, the losses in the seasons or the bad playing nights, that ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. compared to my family, what we got going on, what we're trying to do as a team. Um, so, yeah, so it's just th – that makes it easier. You got people in your circle that sometimes say, yo, T, you wilding right now. or <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I think that's a dumbass decision if you do this, this, and this, or don't do that deal. Yeah, 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 you I have do. A, you have a – but, like, and you'd be like, nah, but I think I'm right. And yeah. And you end up listening? Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, sometimes I don't listen, and I learn my lesson, and vice versa. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We got yeah. we got you know a team where we just you know dialogue and figure and figure stuff out. Was it hard your first year? Was it like a lot of distractions? Yeah, um, nah, I wouldn't say it was distractions because I was I was locked in. But my first year was hard for me just because I was a rookie, um, first year playing point guard, 
mm-hmm. at the highest level. Like I was a wing mm-hmm. my whole life almost. I, I played point guard in high school my senior year, but it wasn't like real point guard type mm-hmm. of, you know, some responsibilities. I got here and they're like, you're a point guard. And right. That's it. So it was it was a rough first year. But we talking like off the court. Oh yeah, nah. I I mean distractions. No, the the only distraction was the pandemic happened mm. in my rookie year, in the middle oh, of it, okay. and I had got surgery, so I was doing nothing for like two months. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, I was locked in. Like I was still finding a way to get one percent better every day. I was watching highlights. I was watching film of up. games. I was like, I was on it because I knew either we're gonna start back up and I'm gonna try and get into this rotation, or I'm gonna use this as my off season for the next year and come back way better. It's so never settling. Yeah. No matter what the situation is. Mm-hmm. And I believe that because when we when I was looking up at the stats before I got here, every year you average more points. So either it was more playing time or more scoring. Every year you got better. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 what's up. Yeah, that's that's the goal, man. Even if like, you know, even if your points go down how did you get better or mm-hmm. like you know what i mean because sometimes you're not going to always average what you did the year before but how did you contribute to the team to help them win in a way mm-hmm. and that's just the mentality i got going forward that's what's up that's what's up because i don't know what uh how old were you when you got to the league um i was 22. Mm. i'd have distractions off the court if i was in the league yeah i would be, be honest with myself yeah but do you think you credit that I mean, I guess it's 50-50. But I'm saying you'd have a team around you as well, just yeah. as you had a team around right. you. Well, some, I mean, some kids, some kids don't. You right. Know? You see them get to the NBA, they're gone within two years because they didn't have the right people around them and they had distractions. Mm-hmm. And for me, I was so locked in on mm. – I got – I didn't even feel like I made, I made it to the NBA until I got either my second contract or I was in a position where I was playing on a winning team and contributing in a winning way. So – the right way. When I was in the when I was a rookie, I was just like I put my mentally I put myself as I'm in the last division overseas mm-hmm. mentally. That's where I was mentally, and that I had to grind to get to the league. That's how I was thinking at the time. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't like I wasn't walking around like yeah I'm in the NBA. I finally made it. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like no nah, I'm not even in rotation. I put myself mentally way in you know Istanbul somewhere. Mm. That's no, nah, that's that's <laughs> that's the way you gotta think though. That's that's it. Yeah. That's a that's a overrated key to success, man. Just always wanting to be better and not being complacent on where you at. For sure. What's the? Because when you come in the league, I would what it looks like to me is like all right. So everybody's you're the man. You're the man in high school. You might be the man in college, and you come to NBA, and everybody that's made it was the man somewhere. So you're finding your role in your niche. How long did it take you to find like for you? To, how long did it find? How long did it take you to find your niche like within? We'll say the Clippers organization to be like, all right, this is where I'm successful at. I'm not gonna overstep this boundary. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it took me. I mean, I'm still in the middle of it too. But yeah. To really find that like niche where everybody respects on the team. Yeah. Probably took me like two years. Mm-hmm. You know, because. First year you're a rookie, they don't respect you off rip. So get that out the way. Especially I'm a second round pick, pick 48. Mm. So no 48th pick is coming in and getting respect. I don't think anywhere. <laughs> so um, yeah, just it takes time, man. It takes time. It takes mistakes. It takes how you bounce back. They watch how you bounce back from mistakes. They watch. They just watch you as a pro. And if they see that, you know what I'm saying, you're you're a good pro and. Yeah, that's just how I gain respect, I guess, from my peers. What was it like first time seeing yourself in NBA 2K? <laughs> crazy, because I used to play 2K mm-hmm. a lot. So it was crazy. But I, that's as soon as I saw it, that's when I was done playing it. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> so you don't play video games? Nah. No video games? Mm-mm. No Madden? I mean, I, we, we play around sometimes. Yeah. I don't, like, consistently play anything. Yeah. And I used to heavy, but, like, I I, feel, I don't know. I'm just on a different type of time now. Like I'm just. It's just because you got to, other mm-hmm. other stuff other prioritized stuff, yeah. throughout your day to where you're like, yo, I'm not spending an hour and a half. I mean, yeah, I got other stuff going on, and yeah, I just. Well, I play 2K and I be busting the Clippers ass. I'm just 
they never put you in the lineup. Like, That's right, crazy. No. <laughs> are you right now? Are you at a? Do you have a brand deal with a certain? Um, it's like sneaker. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm sponsored by Anta. So I'm going to my second year. I know Anta. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's Clay Thompson. Yeah. He's, he's the biggest. Like the face of it. Yeah. Yeah. So going to my second year with them. Um, I love it, man. It's comfortable. That's cool. I've never tried Anta products, but I definitely am well aware of. Yeah. Who I, they I want to say they're number one in China right now. Yeah. Mm. For that sounds about that's right. Because I think that's what I heard when I was first ever told about it. Yeah. So the shoes like crazy comfortable and they got nice shoes. That's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, that's what's up. Any other? Any other brand? Um, brand? What can I think of? Nah, nothing, right? Like, you know, I, I dabble with brands and do mm -hmm. like different stuff, different shoots and different pieces or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, sponsored by, definitely just enter. Yeah, I mean, I got Nike and shit. <laughs> just signed a little four year and stuff. They sent me Kobe's. It's cool. For real? Yeah, it's cool, bro. Yeah. You know, they, I'm about to get my own sneaker too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah go ahead. Like, yeah, well, it. I know. Uh, before we wrap up, some kids like to know stuff like this. Like, if you on your way to a game, what's what you banging in the AirPods? Mm, mm -hmm. Pre game playlist. So I drive. I, I like driving to games because it's therapeutic for me. But I'm banging Future. Mm. Um, but I like to switch up my vibes also. So I'm Caribbean. Sometimes I play Caribbean music on the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's a lot of future. Probably like 60% of the season I'm listening in the future. What's your pre -game? So that's cool. Then in the ritual, in the locker room, mm -hmm. is it the right foot, left foot, sleeve, hot it's, tub, whatever? Yeah, for me, I got, I got a whole process. Um, it's everything left foot first, everything left side first. If mm -hmm. I grab anything, it's on my left. Like that's just how I just grew to be over really? time. Yeah. So that's how that's how I am in the arena on game day. Like left everything, and then. Um, just, are you like a? My bad. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. You good. Are you a? Are you like one that gets like antsy? Ah uh, nah. nah, nah. I try to like. I try not to even think about the game. So pregame, I'm I'm with my like my friends on the team. We're just joking around, mm -hmm. you know, messing around all the way up until like a certain time where you know you need to get locked in and mm -hmm. kind of. And a lot of the time, I'm if it's a home game, I'm in the locker room watching other games go on, kind of to distract myself or kind of if I could pick up on anything that I might use for the night mm -hmm. or try or, you know, if we're playing a certain team soon, just mm -hmm. see how they're playing, what's going on. So if it's a home game, I'm probably always watching. A, a game before us, like an East Coast game, because they play right before us. Um, so yeah, just try to. I always try to take my mind off the game instead of just sitting there, just stiff and paranoid about the game. And there's 82 of them mm -hmm. in a regular season, so you can't really, you can't do that to yourself mentally. What's been like when you're saying like you sitting like that stuff? What's been like your most nerve wracking game? Like when you were before the game, you're like, yo, this is about to be crazy. Uh, <laughs> um. My second year, we played Dallas in a game seven. It was my first ever game seven, mm. and I was shook. Luka, no. Yeah, nah, for real, bro. He's a dog. Like, yeah. they went up 2-0 on us to start that series, and we ended up in a game seven. So, that game seven feeling, it's just like fight. And it's my first, like, time ever being in the rotation, my first game seven. I'm like, why is my first playoff series that I'm playing a game seven series like why they had to go to seven I was stressed I was like but I ended up playing pretty well in that game like I think I had like 14 in the first half and then you was good probably I you was were probably good. Good I was good after, after the first, the first yeah. bucket yeah first after the first bucket I was good but leading up to that whoo I was in there like this is crazy you ever <laughs> you ever been on an island and you were just kind of like Ooh. Ooh, it's about to I gotta I gotta lock in. Yeah, like you um, kind of know, like maybe you got switched off, and you kind of like you know you do those little peripheral, and you're like, oh, ain't nobody else here. Yeah. All right, hold up. My <laughs> first ever preseason game was versus the Rockets, and when James Harden was there, and somebody was hurt, so I, I think did I start that game? I might have started, but it was like the second or third possession. I switched on to him, 
thinking like a ball screen was coming. I'm looking around, no ball screen, and he's just doing the little tween tween. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I've seen this too many times. <laughs> so I was like, I was just back up step and let back. him shoot it, man. So I just backed up. He did a little step back. I contested. Did um, he hit it? Nah, he missed. Oh, okay. Ooh, you got to stop he, him. He didn't miss because I, I made a miss. He missed because he just missed. Man, you clamped that shit. Nah, oh, man. Stop. That boy's, especially stop. then when he was. Wow. When he was really. Yeah, he was, that was. Can we say that's prime James Harden? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, st- I don't think he's done yet, though. Like, oh, yeah. I think he. I so think maybe that's when he burst into his prime? Yeah. Like, that's when he was like, oh, this is this is what I can do. Because cause the way he was playing with the Nets before he had that hammy injury was crazy. Like, he was going crazy. So I don't I don't know. Yeah, you're right. He wasn't doing the 50 balls because he didn't need. He wasn't yeah. doing the 50-point triple doubles. But Houston the way Rockets. he was orchestrating the game yeah, with was, Brooklyn was crazy. But yeah, Houston Rockets. James, I don't know. His he had a long he had a long stretch. He's been in the league longer than a lot of people realize. Yeah, yeah, he had a long stretch where he was playing well for a lot of consecutive years. Who is your who's your goat? Who Kobe? That's my goat. Hmm. Yeah. Who's your goat? Uh, I have a couple. You I have one. MJ, of course. That's your goat. Yeah, but Kobe's second. It, yeah. it can almost be like one A, one B, C, whatever. I mean, MJ, yeah, MJ, he's MJ. What Kobe put, was just. Yeah, like, that's what I was gonna say. What gives you? Because people always have a reason why they put either one over the other. What was your? What's your reason? Um, I think, in ter- he really changed the game, for our generation in terms of work ethic, mm. Mm. and focusness and la- You know what I'm saying? And that yep. laser type of focus. To whereas MJ was more just, I'm just, he was almost like I'm a god, like I'm born like this. And Kobe was like, I work for this. Type. But he did work for it. You, I know did. you watched you the know, last dance. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean, though? And, and in terms of like, if you felt like MJ, MJ was just like way out there and nobody could touch him. He was built like that. Okay. In, in, in a way. Because we're different eras, too, you got to remember. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. in a different kind of. So that's how I felt like he was. Mm-hmm. And then watching Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Literally go like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then that. And yeah, then have I the team you. he had and win a championship with that. It was just like that. And didn't you know play as saying? a rookie that much. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's a, it was, there were two different paths for sure. I see what you're saying. Like MJ was on. On the scene. Through. Yeah. Like and then just started beginning winning to with end, it. Yeah. And then started. You know what I'm saying? So it was almost like he was like godly. Like nobody could touch. Everybody knew he, you know, had did all. You know. It was, yeah. It was just, I felt like. But. It's but not a wrong answer. It's not a wrong it's answer. It's not a wrong exactly. answer. I think, and this is no disrespect to him, but I feel like, I'm not even going to go there, but I just think like it's either Kobe or uh, MJ. For some reason, LeBron is great to me. Yeah. I have a hell of respect I got, for him. I got it, I got Kareem's, it. all that. What's up? Is Steph Curry top 10 in the league? In the league? I mean, in, his, in the history. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, he changed. No he, when you alter the game, through I your think, play, through, yeah, I think you, I think you are a top ten. Thank you. Most definitely, you can't play on the NBA game if you can't shoot a three right now. He's the reason why that, that, like, they're they're the reason, like, they, but also he is the spearhead of why it's the three, like, how the game is now. Yeah. All right, because I have that argument with a lot of people, and people say, "How is he not be? top ten of all time?" He like who beats him out? They so, say Tim Duncan. Kobe, I mean, well, Sh- Kobe, Shaq. Uh, Kobe, Shaq, Bill MJ, Russell. Bill Russell, what, Larry, Magic, Yeah, I Kareem, think, I think the Oscar. NBA has been going on for long enough now that it's not fair to limit it to just 10. You that's know, very like, true. Yeah, to say true. that he's Because there's always going to be an argument. Because, like, how long are we going to go till you're going to keep just saying 10, like, or are you yeah. just going to keep certain players in there? Because right. there's going like, to be players you know that's saying? coming by that's going to. We're just going to keep certain players in the top five and be like, they can never move. Right. You know, because KD is you know, with better you. than a lot of. Yeah, because KD would have seen that. Yeah, they keep I agree. He's top five. I agree. But I Kevin agree. Durant is. I agree. You when, know he, what when, I'm he's, when he hangs him up, he's going to be top 10, I think, because at that height, moving. High, but then there's like Giannis, too. Yeah. These like, are just it's different. hard to do just. Uh, They're hybrid. Top 10s. Yeah. Like, you got it. It's not of, fair anymore. It's been NBA's been going on for too long now to be like there's only you gotta keep you gotta move it around now. I agree. Ten thousand percent. 
agree. I um, feel like I won our argument with a lot of people. They're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna know when they see this. Uh, as we wind down, if you could have told your 12 year old self anything, if you could go back and tell him, what would you tell him? I'll tell him, keep doing what you're doing. Because even right then and there when I was 12, I only pictured a life of me being in the NBA. So that's exactly what I tell him. I was, I was locked in different though. Like I was wired way different than a lot of people around me mm -hmm. at that age. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know, I have no idea. But for some reason I just knew, I'd be in my bed like, what, what's gonna be my, my draft speech like to my, mm -hmm. my friends at my draft party? Chosen. At age 12, I'd be You're, thinking that. That's what's and up. Like setting my, like, there'd be certain decisions where like, something would happen. I'd be like, I can't do that because I'm going to the NBA. So I'm not gonna do that. Like that's just how I was thinking. For that's some what, reason. and that's what these kids need to have right. that, that watch this. That's what they need to have. Because I think a lot of I think a lot of people are faced sometimes with certain decisions when you're in the moment. Should I do it or should I not? And you were like, I'm not because this is what I'm gonna do. Right. Some people fall victim to the peer pressure, and we all have at one point. But I'm just saying, like that to have that cognitive, have that awareness at the age of 12. It's crazy. Yeah. Like when I think back on it, I'm like, whoa. How, do, how was I built like that? Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how. That's just how I, just, that's just how I moved. And you seem like a kid that listened yeah. to older people. Like, it, it, I could tell that about you. Like, yeah, that's what it was for me. Thing. Like, learning from other people's mistakes. Like, right. I don't want to make that same mistake. See, and that clicked for me early, so. Yeah. That's big, because a lot of people just end up having to learn it themselves, no matter how many times you're told. Right. I fell victim to that. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Oh, right, but it looks it. fun. Yeah. All right, and you do it, and you're like, oh, that's why they said don't yeah. do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, though. I made mistakes, too. Right, but, we all do. Yeah, but I just kept pushing, like, kept having that same mentality. Like, if I do this, I would weigh out the options of every decision. Like, if I do this, what would happen? If I do that, what would happen? Would I still be able to make the NBA if I make, if I make this decision? Like, that's just how I was thinking. I love it. I, I love got it. one more random question. Have you ever been able to make Kawhi crack a smile or something like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, a few times. Just joking. I mean, he, he, he laughs. He, yo, know, honestly, you know, behind camera or like, you know, when we're chilling, he's laughing more than he's not. Really? Um, yeah. He's normally like, you know, if conversation, he's laughing, make cracking jokes. Like he. Yeah. He's Regular dude, guy. he just yeah. gives y'all that persona because yeah. yeah. he doesn't really care what y'all think about him. So yeah. he's not into, you know, making people think like you know. He yeah, just, the persona, the yeah. fake personas. I feel you. He's like whatever they think of me. Honestly, I, he don't care. I'm getting paid. Regardless. I'm getting paid, and I'm, I'm and I'm winning. And boy, um, is he getting paid. Last thing, uh, where you see yourself? What is the the next five years? What do you want them to look like for yourself? Um, so we can look back at this and then I'm going yeah. to post it and be the like, next yeah. five years for me, I just want to be growing in, in all aspects that I, in everything that I'm touching. So whether it's like off the court stuff, helping kids out, running my camps, running our tournaments, kind of making that bigger, um, just growing in all areas, growing as a player, as a teammate, kind of being known in the NBA for a great teammate, great player, winner. Um, so yeah, five years down the line, I just want to be still in that lane. I love it. That's I love good, it, bro. Man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. We appreciate already know. It's been real. And appreciate guys, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. This is the lab. We're back, and we signing off. This is Kev. This is Joe, and this is the lab. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir.